I don't think anyone knew how to act. So on one hand, you're going to get the trophy presented. On the other hand, dad's off. One of my earliest memories of Fergie would probably be around the 1990 Cup Final. Maybe the uh, the celebrations from the FA Cup win in 1990. I mean, I, you know, I, I was I'm a child of the mid 80s, so that, that, that I was very small around then. But he was the manager of my club, and there he was lifting a trophy, and it felt really good. I was very lucky because from the moment I got taken to football. For, like I was born in 89, so Fergie's there. I suppose it's the year we won the league for sign, probably Sheffield Wednesday, when Bruce scored and he's on the pitch, him and Kiddo giving it the big, all that. It, it was like Ferguson was just amazing, you know, you're winning derbies, Liverpool are after four, you're winning the league, you've won in Europe, everything just seemed to sort of go as well as you could expect really. I know we didn't do well in the Champions League, but in early doors, but to me it was almost like a like a, a god almost, you know what I mean? As a young kid, to, to just be given everything you could want from your football team, there it is. It's, it seems so inconceivable that he would ever be able, you know, anyone would ever be able to, to catch up You know what they had their league titles, the 18. Um, but he did it. He planned a way for us to, to catch and overtake them. Um, and... As, as tribal as football is, that's the biggest bragging rights that we have uh, over our um, our biggest rivals, uh, and he was the one that that gave it to us. Well, it was quite it was quite upsetting because he he'd given us he he he'd created the best club in the world in 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 so many ways. Football really became important, and a lot of that for me was down to the fact that I got to see football like that every week really exciting football successful football and something that brought me and my mates together brought my family together and really it was it's kind of like a family member going it really is and yeah he can be he's a family member who maybe is a bit of an ass at times can be a bit nasty and horrible but always had you and you as a supporter you as a club behind what he was doing there was always a reason behind it and it was always to get the best for for the club and as a supporter of the club that's all you can ask for as a manager of somebody that's trying to do the best for it yeah it was only like i said when i got to the ground just really really like a kind of stunned can't believe this is the last time this is going to be happening sort of thing and that i think was when it was like oh no oh no it's over like if you're so I was born in 1984. So obviously, Fergie's been there for the duration. And that brings with it obviously a lot of stability, not let alone the trophies and all the, all that. But, you know, it's always there. It's like a constant in your life. No matter what else is going on, Alex Ferguson is at Man United. So, you know, it's going to be fine, maybe. At least that will be fine. And no, nah, he's off now. You know. You have to deal with this as well. I remember going there just feeling an overwhelming sadness at that time I hadn't nailed a ticket for the Hawthorns game so in my head that was the last time I was ever going to see Fergie and not only Fergie skulls as well and it just felt like a huge end of an era but also I kind of look back at that with a little bit of regret in that I didn't soak it up as much as I maybe wanted to, maybe should have, because I didn't expect what was to follow. I didn't expect it to dramatically fall apart like that, which is probably a little bit naive and probably kind of sums up that whole Fergie kid generation. Like, I am a Fergie kid, all I know is Fergie. And all that success, kind of, we were spoiled. Um, it, it goes two ways with the... Uh, so we all had these placards, um, you know, that, that, that made the champions um, and the 20 and the, um, the Stratford end round, round the champions in the North Stand. 
Um, and while I'm sure they're great for television, what you effectively get as a fan is a red placard in front of you during the key moment when Ferguson's walking out through his um, a guard of honour uh, and a placard in front of you down here and there's the guy next to you that's got one that's beaten over you this way. And, and so you're peering through a slit between all these cards that's, that's creating this visual image for people that aren't there. Seen the whole champions um, down the uh, south, the uh, north stand, sorry, as well. And the fact it was raining, I don't know why, but it wasn't heavy rain, but it was just that rain. It, it kind of felt, it felt right in a way. It, it felt like it shouldn't have been a bright, sunny day. It did feel like it had to be like a, a Manchester day. I think people were very thankful that he'd given us so much of his life and his time, um, but we didn't really want him to go. But, you know, it's it's also the case that nobody lasts forever in these things. It was a really bit of a scary time. And, you, like, it's, you know, I think everyone tried to remain positive. Even when David Moyes was announced, we all, met, by and large, tried to think this is going to be a positive thing, this is going to be a good thing, even though some of us were like, really? Um, but, yeah, it was a really scary time. It was just a weird feeling. It was just sort of weird because I'd never known Manchester United, really, without Alex Ferguson as manager. But to then see him on the pitch for the last time and the speech that he gave as well, I think that speech kind of maybe afforded David Moyes I'm sorry to say his name in, when, we, when we're remembering the good times, but that speech probably gave David Moyes a few more months than he probably would have got. And that was how powerful Fergie was. That speech was ringing in everybody's ears, stand by your new manager. That when we bad times here, the club stood by me, all the staff stood by me, the players stood by me. Your job now is to stand by our new manager. But our job now is to, is to support the next manager, uh, so that went well. I remember my old man saying to me like, you don't know what it's like to be a football fan, like you really don't, like this is everything and I just felt really spoiled, really lucky as well because Fergie's a one-off. Whenever, wherever I'm watching it, whether that's you know at the ground or in the pub or with my mates, there's always someone that goes, oh, I'm so excited. If you'd have said to me when I was 10 years old, you know, what, what do you think United could do or what would you want United to do? It'd be pretty much what we did with Fergie. Everybody should have a retirement that they enjoy. I feel like he'd earn a bit of privacy and a bit of a bit of his own life. So from from a human perspective, I, I suppose I felt like he'd given me enough. You know, it was it was almost rude to want more. It's never going to be the same, and you, you would always want. You know, I'd always want mid, mid to late nights for you back. What I went well, if you could give me somebody like him. And you know, 20 years younger, yeah, in a heartbeat, I'd have him back. But I suppose as well, because he gave so much, you don't you don't want to go back kind of way as well. You're glad for what you got, because we couldn't have got much else than what we did. 